Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something mounts with the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Rain Check. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right, Rue's room. In the room with Rue. The revelation that his work is less sinister than I'd imagine brings a sigh of relief and a measure of relaxation. So why this case then? I'm not at liberty to share specifics. I'm simply here to gather information. Right, uh, well then, I, I guess this is starting to make a bit more sense. Anyway, glad I ran into you up there. Your little stunt almost blew my cover. What do you mean? I still don't understand why you did that. Why'd you cover for me back there? The wolf smirks and repositions himself, leaning back on the bed with his arms supporting him. You fucked up that cat, plain and simple. I suddenly feel embarrassed and my face heats up at his blunt remark. There's no, yeah, there's no way you would have avoided a trip to the station. Particularly with that hard-ass bear leading the charge. There's some venom in the way you said that. I guess, but how did you know I was attacked? Did you see it happen? Actually, no, I didn't. Call it an educated guess. I noticed that cat prowling around the casino earlier. He moved towards my poker table, then veered away unexpectedly. Plus, I don't like the way he's looking at me. You don't look like the violent type. You're so... Rue stops mid-sentence with a cheeky smirk. <clears throat> Sophisticated. I shoot Rue a disapproving glare, but he's too busy chuckling at his own joke to notice. Hey, this isn't funny, you know. I was just attacked. I gesture towards the hastily made bandage around my tail, grimacing as I attempt to move it. As he stares at my injury, his smirk gradually dissipates into a more stern look. I know, but you're fine, aren't you? I've seen plenty of guys your size. I don't think any of them would have lost to someone like that. And what you do earlier? Punch him in the... And what you do earlier? Punch him in the gut? My eyes shift to Rue from Rue to the floor. No, I was pinned down, so I kicked him off of me. Rue nods at me as if he had anticipated that very answer. Not bad. And no, it is. I, I thought I had almost killed someone. He scoffs at me, shaking his head. You can't kill someone with just a kick to the chest. Yeah, you can. I'm unsure if what he said is true, but I ignore it and press on with my questioning. Fine, but why does this matter to you, though? Why did you cover for me back there? It does and it doesn't. Look, I know you're smart. The police here are not your friend. You only go to them with minor petty crimes, not assaults. My attention sharpens on him as I strive to comprehend the full implications of his words. I see, and why's that? Listen. I'm sure you remember the numerous instances of power abuse, corruption, and bribery over the past few years. Remember the Castleton incident last year? The rumor about the mayor hiring a hitman to kill his wife? Wait, what? Really? That sounds like something that would make headlines. I don't think I've ever heard anything like that before. Figures. It got hushed up pretty quickly. Not surprising if you missed it. It made headlines once, but then it was quickly silenced. I heard a gag order was put in place by the police. Now that I think about it, there were several head, several leads that pointed to Castleton's wife being murdered, but the police never followed up on any of them. Just sat around with their paws in their ass. Rue gives me a playful smirk and then shrugs. I'm certain it was the same police that helped the Grand Marine. The Grand Marine hide the recent attacks as well. Terrible, sure, but you get used to it when living here. That is terrible. Why isn't anyone doing anything about it? What are they going to do? Call the police? He chuckles at his own question. I guess not. I guess not. Do you live around these parts or something? Rue shifts his gaze away from me and looks out the window behind us. Used to, but I moved to the city next over around the time shit got bad. As for what happens here, I don't give a fuck. There's a bitter undertone to his words as he speaks. His attention snaps back to me and his unblinking gaze locks onto mine with an intense, unsettling focus. But what does matter is if he had gone down to the station. Believe me, if they had started interrogating you, they would have eventually found out about me somehow. Obviously, I can't afford to have any complications in keeping my presence hidden. So he can't have his cover- Well, is his investigation somehow related to the police? Okay, I guess that makes sense, but why not tell me this at the casino? Ah, oh, that's a fair question. I guess you still haven't caught on, then. What do you mean? The city is riddled with undercover police informants, especially in sleazy, sleazy places like the casino. We're lucky we didn't bump into any earlier, but still. Not to mention things being bugged with hidden mics and cameras in places you least expect it. I made sure to do a complete sweep of this room to ensure it's completely safe. He rises, retrieving the newspaper clipping from me. I trust you won't tell anyone about this. His tone softens noticeably. I hesitate, contemplating the seriousness of the information. Yeah. An awkward pause follows as I look at Rue, uncertain. So what now? Go back to your room. Stay indoors. I'd recommend avoiding casino for the rest of you for the rest of your stay here. I can't
can't argue with this logic, but the thought of being alone and confined in my room for the rest of my trip isn't exactly thrilling. I frown at the idea of being on my own. After today's events, everything seems unsettling, especially considering the state of the city. I guess so, but it's a bit worrying being alone after all this. Hmm. Here, scan this. He takes out his phone and flicks over to an app that displays a bunch of QR codes. The wolf taps on one of them and it quickly enlarges, covering the entire screen. This is a temporary proxy to contact me in case something happens. What's a temporary proxy and how does it work? Are you giving me your phone number or something? Rouge shrugs, gesturing for me to take out my phone. Something like that. Don't know the specifics, because, but it's used, but it's supposed to be more secure. Reaching for my phone, left on standby since the casino, I try to awaken the screen. Nothing. Ah, oh, crap, the battery's dead. One second. He strides over to two briefcases on the floor, selecting the smaller one to place on the bed. I grow curious as he produces a coiled, spring-like white cable. Then an unexpected knock on the door coincides with the vibration from Rue's phone in his paw. He squints at the small screen and mutters something to himself before turning back to me. Let me get that. My eyes follow Rue as he walks to the front of the room, checking the spyglass before opening the door. Guess who? Glad to see you again. Rue's imposing figure obscures the newcomer, but their slight Hispanic accent is, dis is distinguishable. Oh, okay. The wolf walks in with a small fox and a large overcoat that's probably no bigger than my shoulders. He's a lot shorter than most foxes I've seen. The traffic was crazy on the freeway, so I had to make a detour. His sentence cuts off as he hands something to Rue. His gaze suddenly locked on me. Another one? What did I say about you inviting guys over during investigations? The fox, standing barely up to Rue's waist, chuckles at his own remark. He's cute, though. Which app did you use this time? Huh? What the hell is this fox talking about? Rue scoffs, sending a sharp glare towards the fox before refocusing on me, quickly, de quickly detecting this distress on my face. I didn't. Rue's voice sounds unamused with the fox's antics. Really? This must be a first. So, what's his name? Ask him yourself. He's right here. Uh, it's Theodore. The air tenses as the fox's sharp gaze locks onto me in an instant. I should have kept my mouth shut. He sizes me up, returning my gaze with a sincere smile that vanishes as he refocuses on Rue. Get him out. You know he. You know we have business to discuss. Hold on, Javier. I was about to give him a proxy contact. He may be important. What? Why? Our eyes meet again. His stare becomes more intense, as though he's searching for something specific within me. I don't like the way he's looking at me. He was attacked earlier. Interesting. By? An addict. I was certain it was a skeleton user. Really? His tone sounds more sarcastic than anything. Javier's gaze shifts from me to my tail, and I instinctively try to conceal it as he tries to examine it. It's your lucky day, then. You're not hurt, are you? His tone shifts and takes on a note of, sense of, con note of concern as he points to my tail. I'm not sure what to say, I nod slowly while avoiding eye contact. He's okay, though. His phone's dead, though. He, he, I was about to restore it. I see, I see. Javier walks past me and takes a seat on the chair in front of the desk, immediately turning his attention to the laptop. Rue gestures from my phone, manipulating a small dial on the head and charging the, and the charging table. Of the charging cable. It'll only take a minute. I cautiously hand over my phone, which he plugs into a nearby outlet using the cable. As the conversation lulls, I take this opportunity to speak up. So, what exactly is a proxy contact? The fox immediately turns to face me from his seat. A proxy contact is an encrypted link between two devices leveraging the strengths of the 7G cellular networks. Essentially, it sets up a private communication line between you two. Though this link can be terminated between either party at any time due to the artificial general intelligence capabilities of 7G. The only drawback is that it'll also terminate if both parties are too far away from the same nearest cell tower since 7G signals cannot circumvent the near-far paradox without it. Click now. It should work fine within the city limits. You're welcome. The fox rattles off the information while nonchalantly tapping away at his phone, as if the words are ingrained in their memory or expertly rehearsed. Rue and I look at each other before he speaks up. He's always like this. I'm about to ask her about something else, but my phone act my phone comes alive. Here. He hands back my phone, with it being charged to a whopping 97% in just the past couple minutes. My eyes widen in amazement. What the hell? That was fast! 
graphene embedded uni a graphene embedded universal charging cable. Uh, charges most phones to full in less than five minutes. You're welcome. <laughs> Quit it. Okay. I try my best to ignore their exchange and unlock my phone and ready the camera app for the QR code. You good? Here. He extends forward his screen and I scan the QR code. My browser pops open briefly before returning back to the home screen, displaying a new app. Press that to contact me. Do so if you're in danger or witness something odd. Okay, do you mind if I try it out now? Drew sighs, shooting me a mildly annoyed look. What is this on my nose? Get that off my nose. Okay. As if he's not looking forward to whatever is about to happen. All right. I tap on the app, and Rue's phone immediately starts vibrating uh, with such intensity that he struggles to muffle it with his paws. God. That only happens the first time the connection is established, so don't worry about that for you. There's also no way to disable that. Oh, okay. Noted. A quick glance at my phone reveals an unusual, an unusual notification. On closer inspection, it's two unread text messages from earlier, unattached to any phone number. It becomes clear they must have been sent, to my, sent when my phone had died and I only had just received upon its reboot. I tap on the alert to reveal the, to reveal the first message, an attached image slowly loading. I squint at my screen, unsure of what I'm looking at. My heart drops in my stomach. I nearly let out an audible cry. Rue notices my panic state and stares at me concerningly. What is it? Oh. My blood freezes. Someone snapped a photo at the exact moment I kicked the cat in the casino. It's blurry, but the details are distinguishable. Could this be from one of those hidden cameras Rue mentioned? I hand over my phone to Rue, not wanting to look at the haunting image anymore. He reluctantly takes it from me and studies the screen. Hmm. Oh my god. What the fuck? That's me! What? Confused, I get closer to Rue and we look at the image on my phone. Look right there, on the far left. That's me! Rue points to the far left of the image, where his blurry figure can be seen lurking near a corner of slot machines. Where the hell was this taken from? Javier comes back around and peers between the gap of Rue and I, trying to get a good look at my phone as Rue naturally lowers his arm for it. Uh, let me see this. Ah. I have no idea. Ironic. Actually, do you mind sending this image this image to Rue? I'd like to take a closer look at it. Yeah, sure thing. I can do that right now. Rue hands me back my phone. As I prepare to forward the image, I remember the other unread text. With some hesitation, I open it, unsure of what more it could reveal. Good job. You'll pick up your reward tomorrow night by yourself. Or else. 10300 Iridescent Drive. My voice trails off. It feels like there's suddenly a lump in my throat. What? My voice trembles, fixated on the cryptic message before me, unable to look away. I give out a small, defeated chuckle as tears start swelling from my eyes. All emotion drains from my body, leaving me feeling like an empty shell. There has to be some mistake. I sit down on the bed and swallow hard, fighting back the urge to throw up. All I want is to close my eyes and make everything go away. I'm at my limit. The room descends into unbearable silence as Javier and Rue exchange uneasy glances. Rue looks at me and speaks up after a long, drawn-out pause. Hey, you okay? I'm not sure why, but those words cut me deeply. I try to keep my composure, but it's getting harder. Alright, I'm gonna uh, pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're... Ooh, excuse me. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!